to start, can you tell us about something from Tiffany's and your character in the film? Yeah, something from Tiffany's is a holiday rom-com, very classic feel with some twists, you know, um, centering this lead uh the woman as the protagonist who's a business owner and um and then of course Ethan uh and this this present swap this 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 ring swap what is going to happen when you have the same little box that gets switched out um and everything all the drama that pursue, that ensues i mean it's really a fun ride and like you know somebody just described it as a warm hug and i feel like everybody <laughs> needs that right now during the holidays with the dumpster fire that we are experiencing of 2022 so i'm like i'm like everybody needs that warm hug ethan is a really dope character a young single dad um who has this incredible relationship with his daughter, who kind of is like a, an adult in herself. Yeah. Um, and they have this best friendship kind of thing going, which is beautiful. And he is on a journey learning how to not try to force things. That even if you're trying to people please all the time and give everybody what they want, that's still a form of, of trying to force things. And um, you know, in this movie, you find out what what is meant to be will be, and mm -hmm. that sometimes you have to go with the flow of life and let things happen organically. You've said in the past that part of your process to get into character is to examine them from the ex internal to the external. What was it about Ethan that you connected with on a human level? The 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 flaws, the mistakes. Mm -hmm. You know, I I I I definitely can relate to trying to control things, but not in the way that he did. Uh, he's very much a people pleaser. I've said this in probably every interview. I think he's a Libra. He's a Libra. He like, <laughs> you know, loves to people please to the point of detriment to his own health, right? Like he will, you know, tell a little white lie, you know, um, just to keep everything copacetic, keep everything chill. Nobody's, every, every time he sees a conflict, he's like, let's go the other direction. Um, and I think that he did, he, as a lot of us do, when we're doing that, when we're trying to compromise for other people, we think that that's our like moral high ground, right? <laughs> like that we're better people because of it. And it's actually unhealthy, you know, if we're not factoring in our own health, if yeah. we're not factoring in everybody and how everybody can be pleased, um, and that sometimes everybody can't be pleased, right? And that sometimes the people that need to be pleased would be very unhealthy for them too, right? What they think is pleasing. So I think I've, or I know um, the biggest lesson I got out of it, as I was saying, was um, to let things go, you know, go with the flow of life let things happen organically with purpose, go through life with purpose, but let things happen organically and respond to them. Don't try to force what you think it should be. Um, yeah. And so I, I definitely can relate to, to more than anything, the mistakes that Ethan makes in that process and, and just finding a way to recover, always trying to find a way to recover and turn that obstacle into an advantage. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, yeah, he's, he's, he does, <laughs> sometimes he does a good job of that, sometimes not so much. And so there's such a fantastic chemistry that comes off the screen between you and Zoe. How did the two of you build that bond? And was there a moment on set when you realized you were creating this magic? Me and Zoe didn't really have to build a bond. Um, She's just, she's a good, she's a great actress, you know, and, and I didn't have to work too hard. We, we connected, we had to do a reading together on Zoom. Um, so, you know, finding the chemistry over Zoom is not the easiest. Uh, so I was, I was elated when <laughs> I realized we didn't have to work so hard for it, right? Um, and as, as far as like making something really special, I think any any time I've got a bunch of behind the scenes of, you know, the cranes and the lights and everything when they shut down New York streets in Soho and Bryant Park and Central Park and trying to get these quick shots uh, between lights and stuff like that. The Guggenheim. I've been to... 
I've been to New York so many times, and I think the first time I was there was for a political campaign in Bryant Park, and I was like trying to get people to vote and register and, you know, going into that big old Whole Foods over there and like, you know, and being completely invisible and feeling that I love that about New York. So the, the, when I, when we went back to shooting Bryant Park and thinking about what I was doing there before and just like sweating and like asking me, Hey, you voting yet? And blah, 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 blah. And then I'm like filming (laughs) <laughs> you know, and somebody like uh, Jeremy Pope hit me and was like, I saw you. I saw you on the street. <laughs> I wanted to yell, but I didn't want to mess up the take. That one, that's that's hilarious and like really special, like that I was getting to do what I love in this place that I frequented so much mm-hmm. and, and have experienced so many life changing uh, things, which is weird that it's Bryant Park. But sitting in the middle of it as we were filming and have all these cameras around us and people watching and everything, I had to stop for a second and be like, oh shit, we're shooting in Bryant Park. (laughs) You know? Yeah. It was really cool. You know, mentorship has been such a driving force in your career. And Leah, who plays your daughter in the film, is just getting started in her career. Did you share any words of advice with her about navigating this industry? Yes is the short answer. <laughs> yeah, yes, is the short answer. Leah asks incredibly advanced questions for her age. Um, so, you know, she was just, most of her, what was really encouraging actually was most of her, most of her questions and, and advice that she was seeking out was like about friends, right? And like, hey, you know, this girl said this thing or this boy said this thing and how do, I, how do I respond to that? And it was just cool to see her be a kid. Like we were playing tic-tac-toe and, you know, between takes and listening to music and she was teaching me TikTok and how to do certain dances that I couldn't do. Um, so, yeah, we had, a, we had a really beautiful time, a really beautiful relationship. But mostly, you know, she was with, um, you know, um, Javicia, who, you know, played Batwoman. And, yeah. you know, Shay, of course, and um, JoJo, who, you know, is incredible as well. Actresses. And, and most of it was just like, I know them. I need to connect Leah to them because Leah needs mm-hmm. black women um, and women of color to look up to in, in the industry. Um, and, and for her to see like Zoe and, um, and Lauren and all of these, Morgan and all of these incredible women behind the scenes producing, right, was inspiring to her. So for me, I was just like tr- trying to translate that, make sure that I highlighted, hey, you see this, you're going to be a boss one day, like, let's, you know, and this is how you do it. Um, so for the most part, it was just conversations about, um, her her like child life and then every once in a while she would have a serious question about career and and we would talk about it 